Ready? I'm ready. I'm so ready for this. Not really. Hi, I'm Dan. Hi, I'm Angie. Hi, Angie. How are you today? <laughs> Good, Dan. How are you? Doing all right. <laughs> you guys will have to go. I'm going to go ahead and, and start cheesing a little bit here because I am sweating a little bit more than usual because I don't usually get to interview my favorite drummer, but I've had the privilege for several years now to know my favorite drummer here, uh, Angela Lisi, uh, here in Nashville, um, and so it's I'm a little bit starstruck right now. Oh, hey. <laughs> hang, hanging out with you today but thank thank you for being here we uh we appreciate it dearly i feel like i'm interviewing you you're my favorite drummer in town so oh gosh is, well not just in town that was yeah that's short-sighted everywhere. I'm, I'm serious um this is one of the best drummers you're going to see uh she's one of the most energetic people one of the friendliest people one of the best drummers um in any genre that i've seen over the past five to six years that we've known each other so um Starting here at the top, I mean, let's let's get into some some resume stuff. So you've been featured, you've been playing drums about twenty years. Yeah. Okay. Is that is that about right? Give mm-hmm. or take or so. Yeah. Um, and you've you got a serious catalog. You've been uh, featured in Drum Magazine. You've played with the likes of Billy Sheenan, uh, Lizzie Hale and Hailstorm, Toshi Kasai, probably mispronounced that. Forgive me. Uh, Kasai, yeah. <laughs> Tim Tucker, Raylan Nelson. You've worked on the Shiprock Cruise, I think, mm-hmm. which had to be. A wild time. That's fun, yeah. I've got some good stories. <laughs> how many? Of, how many of those have you done? Uh, I've done three of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any any one worse or better than the other one without naming names? The last one was the best because I got to play with Corey Glover. Oh, awesome! And it was like the back half of my honeymoon, so okay, that was fun. That is. That's a. Are those like a week? Yeah, about five days. They're a little bit like a day too long. Everyone <laughs> needs to leave a little bit sooner than they do. But <laughs> yeah. uh, every, anytime I've seen something like that, it seems like you start seeing the same people over and over again in like the buffets and the rooms, and you're like, we got to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Is that kind There's of There's not much privacy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Depending on the, regardless of the boat size, I'm sure it's uh, intense. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've worked with uh, the likes of Michael Wagner, who we all know, amazing rock and roll producer. Um, and have currently, I think more recently, worked with a um, wonderful rock and roll singer here in town, Jax Hollow, mm-hmm. with her new record, Underdog Anthems. That's right, yeah. Name of that, and you played on this record. I did. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, and you may have produced a little bit, because I know you're getting into those kind of things. Um, I Not officially. I okay. mean, yeah. I, I mean, I came up, I, I add ideas here and there, but okay. unofficially. <laughs> okay. And you've been working some of the live shows with, mm-hmm. with Jax, right? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, very energetic. I, I've only seen Jax, I think, one time, maybe at one of the, the Rare Hair events. I, I don't think I've had the pleasure live yet, but it seems like it's a very high-energy situation. Yeah. I mean, that girl exudes just, you know, the love of music, which is kind of lost in some people. So Okay, yeah, it's, okay. It's cool. And she, she's sort of on the younger side? Yeah, she's young. Okay, so, so that <laughs> kind of... 20 something like that, yeah. Okay, so that, is that energy... Uh, refreshing for you I mean it it is and it's difficult too because it's hard to you know I'm you know pushing what am I gonna be I'll be 42 this year and you know so she's like old enough to be my kid young enough to be my kid (laughs) so it's it's refreshing because it keeps you feeling younger but also like I need to go home and do laundry and get home with my wife and take care of the dog. And she's like, let's go out. Let's do this. No, I'm too. No. And you're like, (laughs) Jax, (laughs) you know, if you, if you hear my hips popping, like, like (laughs) yours might pop like mine do in the morning. Listen, I'm not getting out past midnight anymore. I I, I know what you mean. Uh, that that's awesome. Well, and so, cause you know, we've had some, some younger, I say younger, I'm, I'm, pushing 40 myself right now and and we've had some younger guys that have started working here and i've never ever in the time that we've known each other thought of you as a jaded person at all um but but do do you find that jax's youthful energy sort of if you have any of those feelings sometimes sort of okay this is why i'm here because it is this much fun and i remember being this excited or or, because you seem like you maintain a high level of excitement no matter what so maybe that's not an issue for you yeah um i'm I, I'm grateful because it's really not too much of an issue for me because if, if I'm doing something I don't like it, I'll just bail. You know, the, like, life is too short. There's a million drummers in town. If I'm not having fun, I'll just go and do something else. It's always about the fun. If you're not having fun, you cannot do it. That's you a know? great way to look at it because there's so many folks that 
you know, you got to pay the bills, of course, like we all do. Yeah. And so you see them all the time with this attitude or that attitude. So it's it's refreshing to know that you've maintained that a, a positive outlook and a, and a way to keep that fun for yourself. And Yeah, it's well, hard. I mean, it's tough, you know, especially the last year, the, just <laughs> yeah. the, the world pretty much shitting on the whole music industry, you know. I mean, that's been difficult for everyone, just mentally. Like, just keeping your mental stamina, like, above water is just... You know that is a feat in itself that is you know you should pat yourself on the back if you're still here <laughs> um and that like that on top of everything like you just you've got no time to do something that you don't want to do you know there's just i know there's bills to pay but outside of that if you're just if you're not in love with what you're doing you can't be, you just gotta stop i think that's kind of what covid did that people is kind of make a lot of people realize that why am i doing this this is awful mm -hmm. you know Okay. Okay. So you bringing that up. So what were, you may have just answered the question, but what, what did you find was keeping you sort of sane? Cause you know, like a lot of folks, we had to put our sticks away last year. Right. Oh. oh, oh, hello. Oh yeah. Somebody, wow. somebody showing off outside. That must be a really strong, good looking person <laughs> showing off their muscles. They're, strut. They're strutting. <laughs> Take a strut. <laughs> So you may may have already answered this question just now, but how did you how did you keep sort of your ideas fresh last year, or or, or did you because um, this company that you're sort of involved that you're very much involved with being a CEO director of A uh, and R Music Services mm -hmm. uh, for management was that is that something you started last year or or during COVID or right yeah last year so. Um my buddy um christopher rambo we just call him rambo obviously because it's the coolest last name you can have <laughs> uh, rambo and i started a and r music services initially as a and r tune sync because you know taco mouth we'd gotten one of our songs in a movie or a couple of them and we're like oh that's great you know we should try and help local bands in nashville do that so that's kind of where that company birthed and it happened last year when we were just like, what are we going to do? We've got mm -hmm. nothing to do, you know. Um, even my wife wasn't busy. She didn't need my help, you know. We were just, it, it was fun for me. It was like a really long vacation only because we were able to stay afloat, you know. Right. Um, so I, we started that company last fall, um, you know, in the midst of the pandemic, just trying to, you know, help bands out have something to do and that kind of morphed into a whole management company so that's where Jax kind of comes in now it's like we manage her okay okay um but we you know we can only do so much because mm -hmm. we don't you know i'm still a drummer at the end of the day you know he's still a business guy at the end of the day so we can help launch artists that don't know what they're doing and then at that point it's like well we can help you get to the next level but you know that uh, that's kind of what the company's morphed into gotcha yeah so you're coming up on a on a year b owning this company oh, running this company. yeah you're right okay oh my god well congratulations that's, thank you that's yeah very exciting um <laughs> uh, that and, and not an easy feat to pull off especially with with the musical climate the way it is and 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 those kind of things um what i don't i think boredom's probably the wrong word but when you were trying to do these things what was yours or yours and rambo's um motivation to to was this something you've always sort of wanted to sort of partake in and get your get your feet into uh, in terms of artist development or is it just because you've I mean you've been playing music a long time um mm -hmm. did you think there did you sort of see a need that you guys could fill that wasn't wasn't out there was that a conversation you guys had before you started um it wasn't before um, we started it kind of morphed into that because we you know drumming with jacks on her record with the great Michael Wagner, she was just going to plop this album out on Spotify, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, girl, no. Like, there is a system. you got to put out videos. you got to put out singles. you got to, you know, if you can afford it, get PR. you got to do it the right way because this album's too good not to. So I used my experience in my previous bands to help her out. And that's where Rambo and I realized, wow, we can actually help people do that. So it wasn't really out of... A desire for me you know to do it or Rambo I think you know he's a business guy so any way to make the business money is probably is you know more of a motivation for him than me you know okay. I'm if I want to do it to help people I like helping people um, 
as long as it doesn't take away from me helping myself. But um, I, I think that kind of morphed, you know, through the whole, uh, through her album cycle. So she ended up not putting it out in December when she wanted to. We waited till the end of February, and she, I think she kind of like just splashed onto the scene out of nowhere, and that was the intent, you yeah. know, to make her seem, I mean, that's what PR and all this stuff is, to make her seem larger than life, but when you do see her, you're like, oh, crap. She is talented. She can sing. She can write a song. She can freaking rip on guitar, oh, too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. so the talent is there, but if you don't advertise it the right way, no one's going to know. I can I can appreciate that for sure. Um, so so that was something you guys clearly had some input with in, in terms of, uh, of not necessarily what direction, but the timing of the releases and things. So is that as you get into this a little bit more, is that something you're finding that you have a lot of experience with or, or that you're kind of learning in terms of all the new stuff, like, you know, making sure that, that you, uh, release things in the right, for the right reasons for the algorithm to see it correctly. Or, you know, are, if she releases this single at Thursday at nine, will she get more hits if then if she does it Wednesday at whatever, is that something that you already brought to the table or are you, you and Rambo both sort of learning of that like that as you go? Um, as we go, and I'm not even sure we're learning it. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'll see managers talk about it online. I'm like, oh, no, nope, my brain just shuts down. Yeah. I just have no desire. Mm-hmm. I ha- it's just overwhelming. And all I can think about is, you know, I'm just going to get back to doing what I'm good at. And that's just drumming, you know. And, and that's clearly no disrespect to Jax. You know, I was happy to, to help her out and still am. Um, but the more involved I get in management, the less I want to do it, you know, cause it's, yes. it's just, it, well, I'm not ready to do that fully yet. You know, okay. I think that's what's happening is like now it's morphing into me. Just the world's opening back up. I just want to be on the road like everybody, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, um, I'm good at managing. I used to, you know, I was a manager at my last weather office before I resigned and, uh, I just it just isn't as fun as doing the the drumming, you know. Obviously, <laughs> I understand, and uh, and it shows when you play. I mean, you know, as, as many times as I've gotten to see you play, uh, it's certainly always the highlight of of, of my evenings at those at those uh, shows. Oh man, um, you're so sweet. It gets it gets a little <laughs> wild, but um, so okay. So you just brought it up. So let's let's talk a little bit about. And this is definitely going to be something that you're going to have to elaborate on it because I'm going to totally botch anything I'm about to say. So forgive me, but, um, Bring it. <laughs> you've been playing, playing music mostly full time for fit 20, 20 years. You said, um, you, you are a meteorologist. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's big time hoodle doings in terms of science, in terms of, of just brain power and, and things like that. So when you, when you walked away from, professional meteorology I guess maybe the way to say it yeah um that it's w- w- switching from any career always takes a lot of stomach and guile um and that's it's awesome that you were able to to do that to follow a passion so uh, this is probably a, a beaten over the head question but what did it take for you to find the the courage in yourself to to walk away from from a long time career like that one, the job kind of changed. Mm-hmm. That sort of helped because it went from working radar and really getting my hands dirty to answering emails and coordinating more emails and phone calls. And it just it, it lost a lot of luster over the, the few years that I worked there. Um, also, my the band at the time um, was getting busy. And mm-hmm. uh, my boss was awesome. He was letting me take leave without pay, you know, and just kind of leave work to go drum and then I'd come back whenever I wanted. But I started feeling really guilty about that because I was a, the office trainer. So I had a duty to be there and train these people instead of be on the road. So I, I basically had a talk with um, my wife, Megan, and I was like, if I leave this job, can you float me, you know, <laughs> in case something goes bad? And of course she's awesome. Um, and she was totally fine with it. So I just went to my boss and like, look, man, I'm, my mind is on drumming all the time. It's not here. You, ne- right. you need to, you need a new person. So that's kind of, the money was really good. It's a government cushy job, man. Right, you know? right. Um, but it, there was in my head, there was just no question I was done. 
I, okay. I have no regret that I left. That's so cool. Um, because I mean, I, I had to, I had to stalk you on Instagram <laughs> and things a little bit. Um, to, to sort of to get the courage to chat with you today, and you, I feel like I saw a very young infant photograph of you with sticks in your hands at some point. Yeah. So you've been playing your not just professionally for several years now or 20 years but you've been playing your whole life you know I didn't play drums until I sat down at my uncle's kid he had one in his basement like I was a teenager Mm -hmm. and I just started playing I was able to play a beat and I just knew I was like man I'm supposed to be a drummer not and I was playing flute at the time so I played flute all through like sixth grade through college so I was like I went to school for flute performance I don't know what you do with that besides work you know for a symphony maybe but um, I didn't think that part through (laughs) so I went there first for flute performance and then that very first year of college I you know changed majors from flute to math to meteorology and then dropped flute and picked up drums so okay that was a very active interesting year in my life right so so I mean you know I goof around when customers come in and say, oh, you know, drums are so difficult. I'm like, well, you know, a caveman could play drums. You know, it's kind of the easiest instrument because all you do is move your hands around. Um, But, I mean, it seems like you have a very analytical mind because not only being a flautist, that's extreme, you know, dexterity, but also, you know, you got a million things going on in your brain. You have to read sheet music, which is something I can't do. Um, Then, so you're going to a a math major and then to into meteorology. So it seems like you were all... I mean, I, I know you're brilliant, but it seems like you were always trying to do something very analytical, maybe, or you just... Yeah, I'm very, like, math-oriented, very, you know, whatever that is. Like, book smart, I guess. Like, if I can if I can solve a problem without knowing why, I think that's why I like math so much. I'm like, it just is. Like, that's just how it goes. You don't have to know why. You just do it and move on to the next problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. I think that that's how my mind works. Like, I don't want to know all the reasons behind everything okay you know I'm just very like like I can get deep on certain things but like that's not it music if it moves my head that's all I care about you know yeah, like yeah. I'm not into playing crazy stuff you know it, I mean I'm pretty I'm a pretty standard caveman drummer you know <laughs> so so you so you graduated with a you have a master's mm-hmm. um in in uh, let's see, atmospheric science from Purdue is that is that what that's it is? Right, yeah. Boiler okay. up. <laughs> that's. I don't, yeah. well, what'd you say? Boiler up. That's our. <laughs> yeah. That's the chant. <laughs> you are an award-winning uh, meteor meteorological is that pronunciation meteorological scientist. Yeah, the Isaac Klein Award. Oh, is that you, wrong? How the hell did you find this stuff? Or the no, Rex or Rex Award? I think because you because you are a specialist in bow echoes and squall lines yeah is that right at the time at the yeah. time okay but that's I mean, big that's big stuff because you threw like conferences that were the first in different regions and i mean the reason i'm bringing all this up is because i have a personal interest in uh angie's weather forecasting on her social medias because <laughs> i like a lot of people in town this is who I go to for, for my weather forecasting because, you know, the big wigs on the TV stations, they're going to get paid off by Kroger and all this. But you're going you're gonna to say the real science <laughs> to keep your local rock and roll community safe. So that's why we should all trust you. That's the whole reason oh, I'm bringing man, all this up. that's a lot of pressure. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I told you I was going to embarrass you. So, yeah. But this is, this is all true, right? Like, I mean, you've got some serious I, qualifications. Yeah, I was a big, like, severe weather nerd. Yeah. And loved, like, I loved learning about storms. And bow echoes and squall lines were, like, my forte. Basically, a line of thunderstorms that produce mostly wind damage, sometimes embedded tornadoes and stuff. So, um, but, I, yeah, I threw on some workshops, you know, in the weather service and had all these big wigs come out and stuff. And it was really, I mean, it was a lot of fun. I mean, those are networking events, mm-hmm. just to have fun with your friends. But um, it was always a good learning experience, too. And I liked doing that because it's so hard to, to get information down to the office level. Yeah. And that's the best way to do it, like just plaster it for everybody. Like, here's the latest. This is how you need to warn on this kind of storm, that sort of thing. So... And I will say, working in several weather service offices, Nashville probably has, like, the best TV meteorologists in the country. I mean, at least that I've worked with. Yeah. They're really knowledgeable, friends with the weather service, uh, friends with Nash Severe Weather. They all get along great. They're all really smart. So 
you're under a very keen and watchful eye here yeah. in Nashville. Because you'll, you'll hear the old boys come into the store and they'll say, well, you know, I know that Kroger's getting kickbacks from Channel 2 because they're <laughs> they're they're hyping up all the whatever. And you're like, well, hang on now. You know, I, you know yeah. so anyway, all, all that to say, um, you're a brilliant and qualified scientist and to to take... Uh, to, to, to use the word again, guile, to, to walk away from that because of your passion. That's huge. It's, it's super brave and admirable. And um, hopefully, you know, us chatting for a few minutes today will encourage other folks to have that. Because, you know, there's so many people, I'm sure, out there. They're just like, I'm done with this. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm sure because of your story, you've been inspiring to, to folks like that. I mean, do you get to chat about that sort of career swap? with a lot of people or does that not really come up too often um it comes up once in a while um actually i someone reached out to me on instagram and they went from musician to meteorology which okay. i thought was really cool of them to to reach out i'm like oh that's interesting you know to to do the exact opposite i did um they were probably tired of being poor <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. eh. you know it's a not easy uh, you know, it's you could, they they print money, man. Are they printing snare drums? No. <laughs> <laughs> they literally aren't. They're out of wood. They're out, <laughs> you can't of, get anything. out of bronze. You know, a lot of these companies. You've got that. Is it a what is it? Seven by fourteen Tama. Cop. Is it a copper or yeah, bronze? Yeah, copper star on it. Yeah. You, you still got that drum, don't mm-hmm. you? That drum rips. I've heard it on stuff you played on. You need to hold on to that because a lot of companies yeah. have so, got rid of copper snares. A lot of companies are discontinuing bronze snares. Oh, it hurts. So you got my soul, man. You got a collector's <laughs> item in that thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the let's see, because you've got I'm trying to I don't like to gear nerd too much on these things, but you've got a red sparkle Tama kit, mm-hmm. custom blue. Yeah, sparkle. custom blue violet sparkle. Blue violet yeah. sparkle. If you guys haven't seen that kit, definitely look on the social medias or any of these places she's playing on because that kit is she's a beaut it's one for the ages uh, that's one of the best <laughs> lacquers i've ever seen uh for sure um what's coming up because you're i mean i've seen your calendar i mean you've got maybe seven or eight shows this month mm-hmm. or over the next two months yeah what's the what's the most current thing that's happening are you doing you're playing rare hair on friday rare hair friday yeah Okay. On a rock and pod and the Music City Drum Show Saturday, I'm gonna hit both. Oh, uh, how many? Because uh, because forget, I'm an old man. What is what is rock and pod for for the grown ups in the room who like me yes. who don't know what the heck it is? <laughs> so rock and pod is a um, basically a workshop or conference full of um, podcasters, and then you know some famous, semi famous people come out, and the podcasters will basically do rounds of interviewing, and some people. Like the fans can come in and meet some of their idols, or they can sit and listen to the podcast. But it's it's for fans and also like up and coming musicians. So like, Jax, for instance, is doing a round of podcasts this weekend, which is great for her. Um, but then I, I'm sure Billy Sheen will probably be there, someone big like that, and then the fans can stand in line, get a photo, oh, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. So are you are you doing any of the podcast yourself this weekend? I don't think so. No, I'm just going. Well, I was hoping you could bring back a report of what a professional podcast is like so we could use it as an example <laughs> next time, but I guess I'll have to nope, look elsewhere. I can't help you. <laughs> oh, golly. My professional days are over, <laughs> man. <laughs> you said, uh, I, I, there's a great picture, you said Billy Sheen, and there's a great picture of you playing at the exit end, maybe, mm-hmm. with him, and you've just got this million-dollar smile on because, I mean, clearly that's an awesome experience Hope, I'm sure it was oh my god I was so nervous so it was for a bass off and oh, that's um, right. so all these you know basses come together put a song together and some of them had their drummer some didn't so when I was in Taco Mouth Flip Cooper put together a song and we worked on one and got to drum that and uh, I actually played um, Torpy's um, event you know the yeah I forget like before he passed so I got to meet him before before that so that was kind of that was also weird to see Billy Sheen again in that context but um yeah he he was standing side stage and I was literally getting ready to go Megan had pulled the car around I was leaving early and he leaned over he's like hey will you 
will you just um, back me on the last bit? I was like, what? <laughs> I don't, I am, like we said, I'm analytical. I like everything planned. I'm very Virgo energy. Um, you know, I need to know what's happening in advance and be prepared. So I almost said no. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, all right, I'll do it. I've never done anything like that before. So go tell Meg, like, just go home. I'll be here for a while. <laughs> and I got to drum behind him. That's exciting. Which was crazy. I know I was super nervous and probably sweating and I might have peed on the throne, but it wasn't mine. Hey, there you go. He, you know, he's going to be there Friday. Maybe we get to yeah. have a little reunion jam or something like that. Oh my God. You know. No, I just, a picture is fine. Okay. All right. Fair. <laughs> so, okay. So admittedly you're, you're an analytical person, a studious person. So what, cause I've seen you on some huge gigs with some huge people in front of you. And we've all had that view of terror from behind the drum set of, okay, I have to drive this bus. How's it going to go? What advice can you give as a person who has been in those high octane situations to a, to a younger drummer who may have no idea how to even start? Like, okay, Bob Johnson drummer is from Kansas City. We miss you, Tyson. Uh, is going to be um, playing this gig. He's never done a gig before like this. What advice could you give this person to, to prepare for that? Like when you're going to do one of these big things, how do you approach it? Um, I think, one, you can't take it too seriously. Um, you know, you just have to go in and have fun because there's going to be a lot of a lot of people there, like, going after the superstars, like, trying to get pictures, you know. They want to be around people that are cool or don't really want to talk about music necessarily, you know. And I think that's where I get so many, like, crazy contacts because I'm not a gear nerd I don't really want to talk music all the time you know I love music I love to drum but um, I can talk about other things you know and I think that's the best way to prepare do a little bit of homework know who's gonna be there you know what their bands they've been in that kind of stuff um, know the song or songs you're gonna play like come prepared know that stuff and then just have fun be cool say hello to people you know make yourself known like Mm -hmm. that's even if it's uh, like genuinely though you know don't just stand there and be like oh i'm angie lisey hey you know (laughs) nobody cares just be like hey uh i'm a drummer you know hi i'm angie nice to meet you i really like your stuff or whatever you know just as long as you're genuine about it then it all works out fine that uh yeah, and that we've you know we've all seen in this town, uh, and and I know I've been guilty of it too. The the maybe the false, false genuine when you're younger and you're trying to because that foot getting that foot in the door is very intimidating. So it's still hard. I mean, still it's a ba- it's a balancing act. Well, yeah. I don't see how? I mean, you're like the most famous drummer in this town. Come on now, you play with everybody. Good lord. <laughs> Not Famous because of meteorology, maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, I saved some of your asses in that tornado. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Last, last March, everybody was on Angie's Facebook saying, "Please, Angie, tell me something." They won't leave. <laughs> I tell, I can't tell you how many times to this day. Uh, <laughs> my wife Sally, I'm going to throw her under the bus right now. She'll, she'll, you know, you know, something's on the television. She goes, "Hang on, hang on, let me see what Angie's saying about this." Thing right here. Let me see. What, <laughs> Angie says it's fine. We're fine. So you know that. <laughs> that's real trust Angie um, yeah. and if I'm not posting about it it's either not bad or I have no idea what's happening and I'm in a different state <laughs> you're busy I mean you're you're touring yeah. um, that's true tell us a little <laughs> bit about because it's related to forecasting because you're forecasting rock and roll on Fridays now at the get happier Fridays what's uh, it's awesome what's what's going on with that situation um, that just I don't know what I was thinking that week but I was oh so I was out I was out of town on a gig and Grimey's texting me hey you know whether am I gonna have this show outside or not and so I look at the radar app I'm like get this radar app radar scope I'm not plugged by them it's just the best um get this radar app and then you'll be able to see if anything's popping you know within an hour of the show and two times like the first two weeks he had those shows i was out of town and helping him like guide through this stuff i'm like i think you're gonna be fine it's so (laughs) close man Uh, and then another time like you're gonna be indoors it's just gonna pour um and then i was just like you know what? i'll just do i thought about it over the week i'm like get happier fridays i'll do a get happier forecast that'll be fun 
And like, I'm not funny. Not, you know, everyone jokes, you know, if I'm going to be funny, I have to be drinking usually. <laughs> At least my wife says that. Um, <laughs> she's really funny. Uh, so I'm not like, I don't know why I just started doing it. I'm like, if you're going to text me all day Friday about the weather, I'm just going to do a forecast for you. And then I'll make it funny too, because why not? Uh, you know, but, I mean, I've seen them. I think what are we are we four episodes in, something like that. We've got three more. I think those those shows are done. Oh, oh, the I think he's stopping them. The Friday night outside. Yeah. Okay. Probably because too there's too they're too busy inside, which is great. Good problem to have. Hey, that's that's okay. I went to the I went to one of them two weeks ago, and it was pretty packed in the parking lot for mm-hmm. sure. Potentially because of your celebrity uh, voice bringing people to the show. Sure, I'm would, sure that's the reason. I would imagine so, but that, that's that's good that see. Even Grimes trusts the wisdom of Angie, so I'm I'm not kidding, folks. This is this is who we all need to put our faith in. Too much pressure, sorry. Um, <laughs> so what? Okay, so you, you always have to ask this question on these things. Uh, let's see, worst. I want to say worst gig because there, there could be a lot of those, but like mm. most. Like, okay, here's an example. One time, back when I was a young guy, I always took my shoes off to play drums. And then I had to play a very uh, unscrupulous club that was uh, previously a was previously a club that was used for adult entertainment. And we had to set up on the stage, and I was about to take my shoes off. And I said, I don't think I'm going to take my shoes off on here um, because this is, this is a weird gig anyway. So... Um, do you have any weird stories? Like, okay, one time I was setting up my drums and there were freaking waffles with maple syrup on stage and I had to set up around them. Why? Oh, God, I wish. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah, that doesn't sound bad at all. Breakfast rock and roll club idea. Um, wow. I mean, probably the worst gig I've ever been to is the sound... I, I won't name the venue, but the sound guy got wasted mm-hmm. and was laying on a couch when our set started, so... Excellent. I, you know, that went really well. Was he passed out? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so he's not even there, like, listily looking at Facebook while you're playing. He's oh no. He's out of there. He's done for. It yeah. It makes it exciting. Nice guy. Just, you know, yeah. bad problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, that was a bad one. Um, I'll tell you what. I played um, the Thurth Festival, July 3rd. They had an outdoor festival in East Nashville. Okay. Played that a couple times, and most the last one I played, um, a drunk driver sideswiped my car and oh. totaled it. So, and I loved that thing. It was an Impala, and that thing held all my drums and then some. I really miss that car. And that was it. That totaled. Totaled. I mean, totaled another car too. And the neighbors. This is why East Nashville is the best. Like the neighbors ran after the car, got their license plate, and ended up oh, yeah. figuring out who it was. And oh, and we got him. We got him. Great. But you're yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. We weren't in the car. We were still okay, partying. Okay. <laughs> but you came out and discovered the thing. Yeah. Afterwards. It was a, a somber evening to a fun day. <laughs> you just come out there. It's like when you do the gig and you're you're sitting there just ripping. And then all of a sudden you notice your cymbals cracked. And so then you just stare at it the rest of the gig like, this sucks. Yeah. Like, Scoot it with your stick and hit the other side yeah. for a while. <laughs> Not even having fun anymore. I got to spend $300 after this gig. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, whoop whoop for uh, the boys at Sabian. I think you're a uh, Stanky and those guys. You're a Sabian artist, I think, aren't you? I am, yeah. Okay. I'm grateful for, for Chris and all them. Yeah. He's yeah, the best. Those good folks up there, for yeah. sure. Um, okay, so most positively most memorable. Like, when you walked out of there and you said, I literally cannot believe that opportunity just happened to me in terms of walking off the stage. Hmm. Or you, you maybe have a lot of them. Yeah, there... I have a lot of them. Um, I think one of the one of the coolest times is opening for Evanescence. You know that was big. It was they only played three shows that year, and you know got to open for them, and they were awesome people too, which is even cooler. Um, that was a really fun experience. Um, I think playing a Prince song with Corey Glover on Ship Rock has got to be up there. You know that rules. Um, and then we played Motorboat before. Uh, Lemmy died oh. like a couple months before he died and there was a category 4 hurricane in the Bahamas separated by the big island we were on the other side and uh, Motorhead was playing and the ship was just freaking rocking and like literally I was about ready to puke and I had to like usually I'm fine but I had to I had to miss their sex I was just gonna puke everywhere so oh. I had to go lay down and 
knock myself out. <laughs> oh my golly! So I miss after set, but um, I got to talk to Mickey D, which was really cool. That is cool. He saw he saw me playing was complimentary, so that was probably freaking top top three experiences. I think that is sort of that the lightning of the rock and roll gods coming down and touching you a little bit. So I, I, I bet that yeah. was something. Just some validation, like okay. Glad I left my job. This is maybe gonna work out then. <laughs> yeah. Was this was that fairly early on in your professional drumming career? Yeah. I mean, I've always done like, um, you know, since my Louisville days, I was in cover bands and you know working drummer as much as I could be. But here, I think that was the motorboat cruise was before I left my job. Okay. Yeah. So you were sort of still. Uh, uh, on their uh, good graces. Yes. <laughs> sort of leaving work for the rock and roll weekends. Right, At yeah. the time. Okay, okay. Yeah. Are you from Louisville? No, I'm from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. Of all places, yeah. Okay. But I lived in, for work, I moved to Springfield, Missouri for a while, and then Louisville for eight years, and then here nine years now. Okay, so yeah, so you've, I mean, you're, I would consider you a Nashville native at this point for nine years. I think so, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, you, yeah, you've watched it boom in those nine years for sure yeah so when I left Louisville the market crashed so I didn't make anything on my home there and but it was kind of a buyer's market when I moved here so I you know bought a house I'm like cool I can afford this this is great and then (laughs) when I quit my job I yeah it was just it was slim pickings there for a while. Yeah, know? yeah, I get it. And now it's just you can afford this table space for about three hundred thousand a year. That is <laughs> it. They put up those. There's a shotgun across the way up in Madison right now, across from this gas station. And I mean, it's it's like starting in the low four fifties. Oh, You're like, oh my god, it's five hundred square feet and it's half a million dollars. Dude, where do we live? Yeah. It, it makes me sick like I don't want I don't want to live in a place I love Nashville but I don't want to live in a place where only the richest probably white folk can live I mean it just sucks you know it takes the takes the fun out of everything and and the living out of everything you know people should get a fair shot at life and that's not a fair shot of you know half million dollar home no like home yeah 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 right (laughs) plaster and cardboard and um are you and Megan in East Nashville? Is that what you said? We you guys were are? Uh, we're out in Donaldson now, out by the airport. Oh yeah, it's not it's not well. It's getting a little wild out there too. Yeah, um, that's for sure. And it's I mean it's a good place to, to be in terms of you know being able to get around town quickly. If you're playing here, you're playing there. I mean hopefully traffic's not too bad for it's you. It's not bad at shit. all. Yeah, I, I like it actually. Yeah, how long have you guys been out there? Two years coming up here in okay. October. Okay, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, I, I swear it's you know more I was born here and and more and more it's uh like where am i where did this place used to be i mean yeah you know, you're a national unicorn i uh, did not know this there's about a hundred of us that yeah. <laughs> we get together twice a year and make sure everybody's still okay mm-hmm. um at the local mcdonald's but um talking about because i remember when you know we're talking about these high rises and the and the shotgun houses and everything going up um when the residency rock and roll residency uh had to move from because it was, Dan, was it Dan McGinnis and then it was Tailgate? That's right, yeah. And then they had to move out of there because of noise complaints? Mm-hmm. Is that what happened? Which is hilarious because it's so loud anywhere downtown now. Oh, my God. And it's not the bands. <laughs> no. It's, it's people screaming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, um, but that was because, you know, anybody who doesn't know, what, who's watching us talk about this right now, who doesn't know what the rock and roll residency uh, was, is uh, should should definitely check those folks out. They gave a lot of opportunities to a lot of players in town to just to meet and mingle. Um, and it's another unfortunate. I don't want to throw this town under the bus, but it's another unfor- sort of unfortunate side effect of the of the expanse is that yeah. we're losing a lot of our venues. Yeah, you know, we just had to fight for the exit in, which thank goodness we won that battle for now. For now, I think, yeah. Right, but I mean, most of those ones on on wet the west end and, and over there are, are gone and i i think the end survived maybe um yeah i think they barely survived yeah just just barely but you know when when they when those residency guys got thrown out of there for noise complaints because it's like oh it's ten thirty at night and we're trying to sleep and it's like you did move to music city yeah music city it's weird that you think that music shouldn't be playing um 
and then the home studio thing. You remember that a couple years right. ago when they were trying yeah, to yeah, that's right. Shut down all the home studios. It's, it's, it's just <laughs> it's like I don't know who's pumping money into this city, but it's not the majority of the musicians. You know, it's yeah. literally taking away our reason to be here. Ugh. It's so it's so weird because it's such a such a beautiful town, and there's so many great people here. Not so great other people, you know. That just happens in every big city. But for the most part, it's a great city, and <laughs> you can't. Like, at some point, you're gonna have to rename it because yeah. the musicians won't be able to afford to live here. They won't, you know. And if you're gonna outlaw, like, Music Row is home studios, and if you make me- home studios, it's like, did you did you just outlaw your own tourist attraction? Yeah. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Um, it's a strange. It's a. It's a wonderful time to be in this town because there are so many wonderful musicians. But it's also a weird time to be in this town too, because, I mean, God, we lost a lot of players last year. A lot of people either moved to Phoenix or, or you know, we're losing some good friends to Kansas City coming up. Yeah. You know, and which is all great for them, and 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 we all wish them the best, of course. But, I mean, we we lost quite a few folks that weren't able to play and pay the bills last year. So, mm-hmm. I would hate to lose any more. I know. Yeah, and. <laughs> We're so close to maybe being on the other side of it, and then Delta variant and whatever variant comes next, and yeah. whoever doesn't want to, you know, not to get into politics, but I don't know, it shouldn't be political, and I'm a scientist, so, like, you know, if you don't have any issues, you should just get vaccinated, wear a mask, be polite, like, do whatever you can to save music in this town you yeah. know or everyone there'll be a mass exodus you know we're we're all trying to bang our heads and do this thing and we're already having a trouble enough so anyway yeah just <laughs> just come on and help us do the devil's work for once please everybody golly yeah um, don't buy me shots right. get a shot <laughs> us long-haired hippies have nowhere to go man come on now <laughs> Um, what so you're playing a lot this month what's let's see we talked about rare hairs on Friday rocket pods on Saturday where can anybody who watches this podcast and ignores all the goofy stuff coming from my side of the table and listens to the <laughs> awesome stuff coming from your side of the table where can this person check you out next can they see you live coming up besides friday and saturday um here in town or elsewhere can they check you out on the socials of course i know uh Tama Chick is your handle in terms of, of seeing awesome rock and roll from a variety of artists where uh, this is the shameless plug moment yeah <laughs> where can we see you play so yeah anywhere um you know i update my social media pretty much with wherever i'm playing so at tomachick you'll be able to find me tomachick.com that's my website um and i'm basically just other than managing jacks i'm a hired gun right now so if someone needs work i'm gonna take the gig you know um or if someone needs a drummer i need the work I'm going to take the gig, but I've got some irons in the fire for like, you know, a steady band. It's just with the world opening up, like I need something that's constant. You know, I want to, I'm a road dog. I love being on the road and it's not for everybody, but man, it's just, it's the greatest thing. So uh, I really want that like long term, long, long weeks, long months out, you know, on the road. So that's what I'm looking for Mm -hmm. while just, you know, taking what I can. Well, you know, and, and, and I'm going to kiss up again because I have to because you're my favorite drummer, but, you know, 20, it's, it's very stereotypical, but 23 hours of the day is, is really what the trick is because, you know, the one hour on stage, it happens and then it's over. And, you know, anybody who's going to, who already knows you, like a lot of us do and are privileged to know you um, or that are about to know you, hopefully after seeing this and check out your playing, will know that, oh, uh, gra- wow, Angie's a great drummer. That, that part's easy. Um, clearly the hang is, is what's important and I can speak from personal experience spending 23 hours on a day on a bus with, with Angie Lisi would be no issues at all oh, so I, I think you've got both sides of that sword sharpened well thank um, you and I think it's going to be it's already been good but it's going to be I think even better after this um, recovery in, in the rest of hopefully the year and, and next year for you um and i know that all of us here at the store are in your corner i appreciate y'all so much thank you we love having you around and and love being your friend and um i'm grateful for y'all thank you for being here tonight thank you for having me angie my Um, favorite drummer oh my favorite drummer (laughs) is Jax doing finals she's yeah but we're waiting on it so it's coming has there been a um have you been on vinyls yet 
I, um, I, I, I have not. The, the Dead Dead's had a seven inch. We okay. Had a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for, for Brooke, my partner that passed away. It was a seven inch dedicated to her. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because that, getting that wax pressed, there's a special feeling there um, for yeah. sure. And I, clearly there's a comeback. I mean, it's, it's interesting seeing these kids today and their music television. Um, <laughs> buying bu- buying and pressing vinyls and it, I know there's a lot of cost to it but there's something when you get that in your hand so Jax is going to do it and you'll be on yeah. that yep I'll be on yeah I'll be on the vinyl hot that damn. is exciting hot damn seven songs six songs okay Woo-hoo. okay color vinyl or just the regular plain that's alright I, I don't mind it's, I, don't, I can't see what it sounds like I just want to listen to it yeah okay. it's not we had the test presses and listened to it. it sounds freaking awesome so that's awesome Lindsley Records were gracious enough to get it made so we're just waiting okay well that's a that's a I'm waiting with bated breath I can I can I'll just give you one man oh no way <laughs> this this shit ain't free I, I know that <laughs> um, you put enough time in you, you guys deserve everything uh, all right so Angie Lisi thank you for being here on the Forks Drum Closet podcast Thank you for having me. This evening. This I hope has been it, awesome. I hope it wasn't a huge waste of your, your time oh this evening. Oh, yeah, no. I talked um, to you all night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, so check us out, Forks Drum Closet Podcast on YouTube. Also visit uh, visit us on Spotify and then uh, iTunes. I think we're – is iTunes a thing anymore or is it just Apple Music? Either way, check us out on the Apples. Um, ForksDrumCloset.com, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, – Make sure you check Angie Play Out. You're not gonna, you're never gonna regret it. It's gonna be awesome. And if you can come see her play on Friday at the Rare Hair, uh, she'll be killing it with a few other folks out there. I think I'm playing one song, but that's yeah. my shameless, that's my shameless plug. Anyway, come see, come see Dan play. It's Duh. gonna, if you, if you like cavemen, you'll get to watch one that night. Uh, anyway, um, that's enough of my banter. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. You're awesome. Uh, you're awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you.